Send it to 9,000. Let's go to 430 Scuderia. This thing is super good. You guys are not going to be happy because I have sold everything. Now, sometimes in life, big time moments require big time decisions. We are trimming the herd. We're cutting out the weakest link. We're selling a whole fleet of cars to buy one car, the second car, the second hyper car. Lots of times, it's easier to just rip the band aid off. We are selling. The scootery, I know, I know. We just bought it for selling the Scud. I always say if I could keep all of them, I would, but honestly, I don't know if I would because you gotta gas them, you gotta insure them, you gotta register them, you gotta, you gotta pay for them, you gotta maintain them. And unfortunately, like having a whole fleet of cars is exhausting. And maybe the worst part of that, I've sold two other cars. I know, I know, I'm very aware. The running joke on my YouTube channel is I buy my dream supercar and then I promise this, I promise that, I'm gonna do this, we're gonna go here, we're gonna go there. And then two days later, I make a video selling the car. And you can argue, yes, on the scooter, that's kind of what I did. I owned the car for two months, I drove it 2,500 miles, it's an amazing car, and I wasn't planning on selling it, and I can prove it to you guys with one simple fact, and that is this right here. It's a custom vanity plate, I wouldn't do that. If you've been watching me for the last 10 years, you know I would never spend a couple hundred bucks on a vanity plate only to sell the car. I've never done that before, I never would do that. Why would I do that, it doesn't make any sense. I got a phone call last night, one thing led to another. I sold the Veyron, financially I'm doing really, really well because of selling the Veyron, and uh, it's time and the scootery has got to go. So I currently have 15 vehicles and on average every single vehicle has between three and four different problems, sometimes more. You multiply that by 15, we're talking between 45 and 60 different problems just in the car collection. I've come to realize having this car collection of 15 cars is consuming me and it's taking away from my YouTube channel because on these cars there's so many things that are so incredibly boring. Like me getting an oil change on my Ram TRX, that's not very exciting. Going to the DMV to register the Jeep Regini, also not very exciting. Well if I drove it, it would have been exciting but I didn't drive it because I drive because I didn't have a license plate. So I want to consolidate the car collection from 15 cars to 10 cars, get better cars, more exciting cars. I also realized I don't have like a really, 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 really fast car. And that's where the hyper cars in. So in summary, I have sold the Hummer EV. As far as a quick update on my dad's truck, I have ordered a custom new frame that's going to be here between 12 and 15 weeks. I ordered it about seven or eight weeks ago. So it should be here in seven to eight weeks. The Hummer is definitely the easiest of the three cars to sell. I mean, it's an EV first off. It's the coolest EV in the entire world, but it's also fairly replaceable. Theoretically, I can go to a GMC dealership, buy another one if I miss it and I really want to. The Ferrari 430 Scuderia, like more than likely, I'll never own a Scud ever again. But the hardest car to sell that I haven't announced quite yet, the Lamborghini, that's gonna be the hardest. <laughs> This is without hesitation the hardest car to sell. This is one of my all-time favorite Lamborghinis. There's only 150 of these in the world. The spec is absolute perfection, but sometimes in life, like, I mean, it just, I already have a Gallardo, and I'm not gonna sell the OG. Now, rather unfortunately, to get the deal done, to sell the 430 scooter here, to sell the Hummer EV, we had to sell the STS. Now, the silver lining is, the truck's gonna be here in about 25 minutes, and there is a vehicle coming off that truck that I now own, and that was another way to get the deal done. It's very, it's very convoluted, it's very complicated, a lot of different moving pieces, and someday, one day, it's gonna make sense. But yes, I've sold the STS, the 430 Scooter, the Hummer EV, the truck's gonna be here in 25 minutes, and on that truck is another car that's arriving that's mine, that's not a hyper car. Yeah, confusing. In my humble opinion, the STS is the coolest version of the Lamborghini Gallardo. They built 14,000 Gallardos, but only 150 of them were the STS, the Super Trofeo Stradale, 71 of 150. I finally bought my fame Stradale, and then I sold it about two months later. I would imagine someday, one day, I'll own another STS. I think I have to, it's such a sick car. Well, we kinda have just like a little bit of bad news. It's not really a big deal, but it's kinda sort of some unfortunate news. The truck that's gonna pick up the STS, the scooter, and the Hummer EV is having some minor mechanical issues, not a big deal. The only issue is it was gonna arrive at 7 p.m. The sun was still gonna be up. It's now gonna arrive closer to uh, midnight. We have to close start up the STS around midnight. The 18 wheeler will be decently loud. The silver lining is the new car that's arriving. It weighs 7,800 pounds, but it doesn't have an engine in it. So it's not gonna be loud, but we have to push it up a driveway that has a slope of maybe half a percent, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's quite steep. The second hypercar. Now owning the Veyron, I had for three years, I put 7,000 miles on it. It was an absolutely incredible experience. I sold the car and I missed it. It was crazy. Owning that car, it unlocked so many doors that I would never have the possibility. And it was also one of the coolest cars in the entire world. I sold the Veyron. I did very well financially on that. And it got me thinking, it's time for round two. Per usual, I haven't quite determined exactly what car I want to get. McLaren P1. That was the car. It was Veyron or P1. I came really close to buying a McLaren P1. It didn't happen. That car is near the top of the list. Someday, one day, regardless of what happens, I will own a P1. Obviously, a Koenigsegg would be absolutely ridiculous. So let me know what you guys think in the comments 
comments below. What do you guys want to see for the second hypercar? Well, we had some technical difficulties, but five hours later, we have made it. What happened? What well, has been a long journey from long Las journey. Vegas, Nevada. Start at 9 a.m. It's now midnight. That is approximately 15 hours. Yeah, it's it's we usually a five-hour drive. We went the long way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. You can say you say that again. This guy is beat up, but I appreciate you. Thank you. Oh, oh my goodness, this is one of my all-time dream cars. I first saw one of these in Portland, Oregon. I must have been like 14 years old. There's around 300 of them in the entire world. I'm always trying to figure out the right verbiage to announce a new car on the channel, but ladies and gentlemen, from the year 1989, the LM002, the Rambo Lambo, and as I mentioned, it doesn't have an engine. This is gonna be a bit of a project, which I realized I said I was trying to get rid of cars and, and we got maybe the most notoriously unreliable car in the world, but it's a Rambo Lambo. This thing is an absolute unit an absolute tank, maybe the weirdest Lamborghini that was ever built. Originally, the LM was kind of destined to be for the military. It was dubbed the Cheetah, and then Lamborghini got rejected by the US military, so they decided to build this for the road. The ingenuity going right now. I have never seen anything quite like this. We are 15 hours into the job right now, and we are slowly but ever so cautiously inching the LM out one inch at a time. That's how we do it. Like I said, best in the business. Come on, this is when we need baby Burlacker. Burlacker's asleep right now. Come on, come on. My neighbors are asleep right now. If Mike's watching this video, I apologize. His wife is not gonna be happy. We got it, Johnny. Come on, come on. This thing is so ridiculous. The black black is so simple. Are you kidding me? What in the world? This thing is so crazy. One of my all-time favorite Lamborghinis. Like, you never, ever, ever see these. These are only going up in value. There's 300 of them in the entire world. The Rambo Lambo has a fishy touchdown in the beautiful state of Utah. I realize you probably hate this truck because you've had to unload it and load it multiple times. There's no engine in it. There's no hate. There's, I, I, there's, no hate. No, there's only love. There's only, only love. love. You're strong. You've been working out. Now you got a dumbbell in the semi. I you were just you telling know. me you squat every day. You got this, you're a one-man band. <laughs> totally. There's only one beast made for this job, and that is a Hellcat Ram TRX, 702 horsepower. Should be just This is the stuff that gets me so ridiculously excited. I believe this is the only one in the state of Utah. At one point there was two LMs, but I believe they left, and in all black, this thing is so incredibly sinister. I know there's a lot of people in the comments typing away that are saying this thing is hideous. Why would I ever spend this much money on this thing? This is cool. Like in the 1980s, if you were Arnold Schwarzenegger, the coolest man in the entire world, this is what you drove. You drove an LM002. It's crazy to see the evolution from the LM002 to the Jeep Ricky, obviously. If there's any Lamborghini executives watching today's video, I do apologize. That was extremely rude and insincere. The Jeep Ruggini is a piece of junk. The LM002, wow. The LM002 is one of the greatest masterpieces of modern automobilia. It's a little bit slippery, the new box is a little bit slippery. Wow, what fortune that you guys are in town. They just got here about 20 minutes ago. Now they are pushing my dead LM into the garage. Look at this, finesse, this technique. Unbelievably <laughs> slippery. That's why I got the extra layer of gloss. Okay, I'm gonna now help. This was built by the same company that built that and that built this but it also makes sense because it's not a like back in the 1970s and 1980s lamborghini was doing some weird 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 stuff including this the all black is so so sinister though i didn't realize how much i was gonna love this the real key right now is we want to get this thing positioned in the exact perfect spot because honestly it's probably gonna be sitting here for like a year the engine is currently sitting in the beautiful state of ohio it has to be rebuilt and so for the foreseeable future this thing is gonna be parked basically dead weight for a while so we want to park it perfectly because once these guys leave it's never been moved i turn away and these guys are doing all the legwork. Oscar, where'd you come from? Where'd you come from? Bye, Gats and LM. I pretty much bought this LM002 sight unseen. I did see it a year ago, but I didn't pay that close attention to the details. It is sick. It is so clean as well. The spec is perfect. The interior is brand new. There's one caveat though, and I don't know how this always continues to happen. Every single Lamborghini I own, no matter what, it always squeaks. If you think the sound of a G-Wagon door opening and closing is stout, Listen to this. That's nice. This interior is absolutely gorgeous. It is like brand spanking new. I think it's a cognac leather, C-O-G, and they see I don't know if the pronunciation of that is right. One thing I love though, the steering wheel on the yellow. I don't know if you guys can tell, like it is up against this dashboard. Why did they do that? I tell you, what Lamborghinis did in like the 70s and 80s makes no sense whatsoever. And that's what kind of makes the cars fun. Some of the newer cars are incredible. They're so good. They're almost too good. 58,226, I'm assuming kilometers. I'm, it's gotta be kilometers. Couple other issues with this car um <laughs> A lot of issues. This thing needs a lot of love. It's gonna be quite the project for a very long time. You got the head unit right here. You got wires. I think this is for the mobile 
phone? I don't know everything there is to know about the LM. I also know that it is one of the most complicated, most difficult cars to actually get running reliable, and it costs a lot of money because parts are next to impossible. But this thing, this is beautiful. I'm not an expert on the LM002. I'm not a guru. I don't know if you guys even care about this truck. I just think it's really, really cool, and so I'm gonna tell you about it. This is a fuel-injected LM, and that's a good thing and a bad thing. Carbureted is more powerful. It sounds better. It looks better, and it looks better because these bumps on the hood on the carburetor are much more aggressive. They're much taller, but the fuel-injected is significantly more reliable. There's only 300 of them in the world, and so you can't really be picky. The problem with reliability on my truck is it doesn't really matter because there's nothing there. There's nothing to break really because there's nothing that can work. So the engine is off in Ohio. It is getting slightly rebuilt. I'll probably ship the LM out to Ohio eventually have the engine reinstalled. Also this hood is so incredibly heavy. The problem is you can see that strut right there, that hood strut. It like, I can't close the hood entirely. And so I can set you guys down. This LM also has the famed Pirelli Scorpion tires and the spare here on the back even has the sand lip as well. This tire is very, very, very rare and very, very, very expensive. And I don't believe anybody manufactures it anymore. And that is one of the biggest problems with the LM. There's only 300 in the world, which I keep on saying and that's because I need to reiterate how rare they are finding parts is next to impossible so this one effectively has a Diablo engine whereas the carbureted effectively have a Countach engine but it's a whole different transmission and so parts electrical 1980s I mean it's literally the perfect storm for the most unreliable vehicle in the world it is a Lamborghini SUV with a Countach or a Diablo engine that says enough this rear tire okay okay it's always harder to do stuff when I'm holding a camera tire oh whoa, 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 whoa. are we gonna clear please clear please they were so close. Purr, whoa, 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 whoa. Perfect. I have no real idea what any of this is whatsoever. I just know that it's spare parts for the LM, so enough of that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Whenever I do anything physical, I'm always trying to film it, and so I only have one hand. I'm also not very strong. <laughs> We got it. I've been doing a lot of research on the LMs because I knew I was buying this. Looking at photos, watching videos, there's no two LMs that are exactly the same. Like they're all different. They all have very unique characteristics. They actually built the LM, I want to say for five to six years. So they built maybe what, 50 a year. The fuel tanks on the LM has got to be the largest fuel tank of any production vehicle in the entire history of a production vehicle. We're talking between 50 and 75 gallon fuel tank. Let's assume $5 a gallon. You're looking at what? 300 to $400 to fill it up. You probably get 12 miles to the gallon going downhill with a tailwind. So your range is probably like seven, eight hundred miles. Like if you gotta drive far without stopping, get an LM. I gotta invest probably fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars to get this thing running. I could also put a Hellcat engine in this thing, God bless Mopar. I don't know if you could ruin a modern day classic. There was also an absolute hero that did a render of an LM002 6x6. Once again, I don't know if I can slice and dice this thing. It's such a rare chuck. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If I had two LMs, it would make it easier to turn one into a 6x6. Back in the 1990s, the LM was one of the biggest vehicles on the road, and now like, Trucks are enormous. The LM looks like a little baby truck next to the TRX. I don't know exactly what it is, but as I get older and older, I want to own the cars from my childhood. The 1989 LM002, the Rambo Lambo. Welcome to the family. And on that bombshell, today's video is over.